What did Margaret Thatcher do in 1979 when it comes to council houses? Look, 1979 is here and notice how it tends to squeeze off. Now, the thing with council houses is this. The councils tend to build bigger family houses and smaller retirement properties. You move in as a family, you have your kids, your kids bugger off, you're left on your own, you move out of the family home into the council bungalow, meaning that that house, that the next family house is recycled for the next generation. You live in your bungalow until you pop your clogs, they carry you out in a box, and then that family moves into your house and it just carries on on a recycle, almost like a conveyor belt. The problem is, if you're taking houses out of the equation and selling them off, you're taking them out of the equation for the next generation. And that is the, been the, that's been the biggest issue with council house sell-off, is that there's always been people that rented. It's just that they were naturally attracted to council houses in the 50s and 60s. Because in the 50s and 60s, if you wanted to rent, you could either rent an a, a awful terraced house, Rigsby, rising damp style, money in the zzz, coin in the meters, drafty, awful place, or you could rent a lovely three-bedroom semi on that nice housing estate the council just built before everyone trashed it, and, and, and it was at 50% market rate, rent. So of course you're going to live there in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s. But then everyone bought there, and again, have you noticed when it comes to the council houses, only the nice ones got bought, not the nasty ones? Strange. It's very strange. So you, the first reason why buy-to-let will continue to grow is Margaret Thatcher selling off all the council houses. The second reason why uh, council um, buy-to-let changed is before 19, what was it, 98? So it came in in 99, was the Housing Act. Who here was a landlord before 1998? Anyone? Different kettle of fish, wasn't it? Protected tenancies. Mm -hmm. You, 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 you. If you, you could almost you, to get a tenant out, you almost had to go to you had to go to court. There was protected tenancies that meant that the person could be in there for life and pass it on to their to their child and their grandchild and be in for like a pound a week. I'm exaggerating, but it wasn't pretty, was it? But the Housing Act brought in this thing called the Short Shorthold Tenancy, or the AST. I'm sure you've all heard of that. But the Short Shorthold Tenancy brought in certain protections for the tenant, but it also brought in protection for landlords. And this meant that it was easier to kick a tenant out if they weren't fulfilling their obligations of paying the rate, rent. The third reason is this. Dinner party buy to let landlords and some of you here will be dinner party let buy to let landlords. Let me explain what a dinner party buy to let landlord is. You're sat around in the posh area of Springfield or Chalmer Village around the lovely dinner party table you've all been to your to your round table or your Masonic do and you're all sat down and you're sitting down and you're going Oh yes, we've just bought a brand new house on the Barrett's estate. They're absolutely fantastic. It's a showroom, uh, but it's beautiful and lovely. Oh yes, we've bought one as well. And everyone was saying, well, if they're buying it, we should be buying one. And that was the introduction of what we call the buy dinner party buy to let landlord. Everyone jumped on the bandwagon because everyone out there, all their mates were jumping on it. But back in 99, in 2000, 2001, 2002, Property prices were rising at around 18 to 19 to 20% a year. That's brilliant return. Absolutely brilliant return. Who else want, to, want, want a slice of that? The problem was this, is that before 1998, the sort of houses, um, the sort of houses that were being bought, uh, that were bought by landlords, were these types of houses. Rigsby, rising damp, not very nice houses. But all these, pe these new landlords weren't buying with their head, they were buying with their heart. And they were buying the, the David Wilson three bedroom semis where they take the, the, have you noticed all the new homes? They take the doors off, watch that one, and the furniture is always three quarter size to make the house look bigger, trust me. They were buying these, which probably doesn't make financial sense on yield. But it didn't matter because they were buying with their heart, not their head, and they were getting capital growth of 20%. 
they were winning. As long as the mortgage was covered, we were getting 20% of growth. Buy-to-let mortgages were introduced in 1997. Before then, if you wanted to borrow money from the bank, you had to join the queue with the person from the factory and, the, and, the, and, and basically commercial loans. And at that rate, in 19, before 1997, in the 95, 96, 97, the, Af the Bank of England base rate was rate b bouncing between 5.5 and 6.5%. Commercial rates are normally around 2% higher than the Bank of England base rate, which means that the, bank, the mortgage rate for a commercial loan was banging around 7, 8, 9%. All right? Now, back in the 90s, we weren't getting that much capital growth. So if you are borrowing money at 7 or 8% and not getting capital growth, you, you're buying it for an investment, so you need, your only way you're going to earn it is off the yield. So you're going to need to, buy, you need to, going to get 10 or 11% to make it worth your while. And the only houses that tend to get that sort of, that are properties at the lower end of the food chain. You know, the, the, the ex-local authority and, and, and terraced houses in not so, not so good areas. But... With all these dinner party landlords buying David Wilson three-bedroom semis, who the hell would want to live in one of those compared to one of those?